Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. It's going to get even more stupid. This scream is going to try and catch fish off a beach on a hand line. That's right. Now, hand line is used all around the world. A lot of subsistence fishermen do that, um, especially from boats. And some huge, huge fish, big marlin and tuna, have been taken using heavy hand lines. But you can catch fish from the shore doing it. And I'm going to give it a try. Have I done it before off the UK? A couple of times, not with great success, I must admit. I'm going to give it a go, and I'm going to use it for my actual hand line. One of these, which most of you youngsters might recognise as a standard crab line, I've wound on 15 pound line on there, with a, a what I call a throw-in or swinging or casting lead up. Remember, I'm using no rod of 80 pound mono there, which I'm going to put the lead and my hook rig baited up, throwing it out as far as I can. I'm also going to be using this, which is a, a polystyrene float, or which way up it goes, commercial float, and I've rammed a piece of uh, PVC, I think it is, uh, piping tube up inside it so that I can hold it or I can ram it in the shingle, the beach, and point it in the direction that I'm going to let the leg go. So again, no rods here. I'm just going to use a hand line here, hand line there. Same principle. I've got here um, uh, about 80 or 100 pound, uh, I've got to call it casting lead, if you like, heavy duty for swinging. Now, most hand line fishermen will tell you do not use fine line like 15 pounds. Cuts into your fingers, nothing here swimming on the south coast of England is ever cutting into my fingers, I assure you. We don't get fish that cut into fingers. So you generally, for the sake of less tangles, use a minimum of about 50 to 80 pound mono, I would think, if you're shore fishing. I'm gonna give it a go with 15 pounds. I don't know how far I'm gonna get out. I could be using waders. In fact, I've got Wellington's and that boots in the, in the car because every little bit of distance counts. But you could use thigh waders, you could use chest waders to give you the extra distance. The sea's pretty flat, there's a bad uh, weather system coming in tomorrow. I'm hoping I'm going to get lucky. Another half hour and the sun goes down, I'll be baiting these up, swinging them around my head, and two methods are going to be used. One, casting it straight off this cone, and the second, laying all the coils along the, the loose line along the beach and seeing if I can get that any farther. And as for bite detection, wait till you see this. If we were using rods, we'd be using a tripod like this setup where you put the rods in the cup here and the rod butt, um, obviously the little cups that hold it down at the bottom. I've slid these right at the top. Now it's a sort of a bit of a cheat really because I could stand there holding one hand line, but I figure I might just as well try and get two out if I can. The crab line and the polystyrene float method. I've got two bamboo bean sticks. I've cut in the end, whether well, you're going to see this here or not, I don't know. I'm doing it now because I want to go fishing pretty quickly. A slot, little notch in there with a hacksaw, and to stop that splitting right down, I've bound an elastic band around there. I've got two of those so that when I cast it out, if I even get it out, this is, I don't want to stand there holding it, but I want to keep it up out the waves a bit. So I'm going to put these bamboo sticks into my standard rod holder, but very, very high, and I'm going to nick the rest of the hand line just in that slot and bring it back down here. So almost like rods for bite detection, but mostly to keep the line out of the waves because otherwise I'm going to get a lot of weed on it. I'm going to give it a go. I've no idea whether I'm going to catch anything, but I'm, I'm basically saving my bait, which is ragworm, tip with squid, until it gets dusk. It's getting that way. Another half an hour, I think I can heave one out. I like to cut my pieces of squid up into long, thin strips, and then just add them on top of the hook over the top of the ragworm, just at the end. Makes the ragworm last a little bit longer if you've got small fish around. There was only one other angler using a regulation rod and reel up the beach from me. Other than that, it was just me trying to beat this watery sun in the evening, which is never a good sign over the Isle of Wight, the weather's coming in. And I wanted to get out there and at least get one trip in before the storm came. The beach was totally deserted. And that was a way I liked it. Ready. I'm all rigged up here. I've got a big lid at the bottom. I'm going to take a crack at it. Give it a go. I think I'll probably jam this in the sand or I might hold it. I'll see how far I can get. Probably going to get booty.
I'll tell you what, that one went farther than I cast with a fishing rod. Anyway, here I'm gonna go, look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tighten up to it there. It's not a big tide, it's a neat tide. And then I'm gonna put the notch of it here in the line. My God, supposing I catch on it, do it. Get the notch in there. Black line at night. It's gonna be fun, isn't it? Just gently take the tension up on it, and that's gonna keep the line up. Put it in here. Put the bamboo bean stick in the holder. Then I just crawl up the surface. You always see it's under tension. Just lay it gently down, sideways on, on the sand. Now you can see what I've got going on here. I've got the hand line through the notch, and it comes back down, and then into the normal cup there. And then what I've done is jam the tube down sideways so the line can't spill off anymore and I'm untension there could actually be screaming and shouting if I see my bean stick twitch pardon the French and it will oh, I, I can't wait for it to get dark I'm going to have a go just to show you guys and try the other way of doing it just with that crab line but putting the line loose on the floor I already think this is the way to go because that, that must have gone 50 yards. Okay, this one's a crab line. Obviously the line can't spin off it like the, uh, the cone piece of uh, polysiding float I've got. But I'm gonna lay the line down on the sand, peel off about 30, 40 yards, and do the same. Helicopter swing it, and see if I can't get it out as far. It's worth a shot anyway. I've got to hold on to the other end, it's gone flying into the sea. Luckily the plastic floats are. <laughs> I'm gonna have to I'm gonna throw the other line to get it out, I couldn't believe that. It went really well, really well. It went really well. But it was just gonna wash in and then gotta get it back. The way to go is that cone. Way, way easier. Or saw the end off with two plastic. Well you've got the stalks like this. If I saw the end off there, I can hold it like this and it will spill off. Meanwhile, I just let the tide wash that in and I'll pick it up. And here we go with the action replay on the close-up head cam. Swing it around, watch that little orange hand line. Look at that thing go. What a dumbass not holding on to the other end, I mean. Now if you're fishing off of deep water, you have no trouble at all. You can sit there, you can hold the line. But when you're fishing off a beach, you've got to get it out as far as you can really. And if it's windy and you've got big waves crashing in, it's probably all you can do to get the lead to carry that bait out there, so you need to overlead it. If I was using a rod and line, I'd be using, say, five ounces. I've got eight ounces on the end of that hand line I put out. I've got the other one back. I've tried it twice with a crab line. It doesn't work, it's too much hassle. But what to do is to use a cone. I need, in some of the foreign countries I've been to, I've seen guys catch you know, really big fish. I saw one um, guy in Bermuda once, many years ago. He caught a 13 pound, 12 ounce gray snapper on a hand line. A little inlet, I think it's called Flats Inlet. It's probably still there. I mean, Flats Inlet, not the snapper. The snapper's in his tummy a long time ago. But that all opened my eyes to how hand lining can work. He was using that a live bait that time. There's no reason why you can't get some good fish. And look, it's just fun at the end of the day, but it's getting it out there. So I feel if you copy a, a spool of a reel and that cone effect, and when you wind it on, do it nice and neatly so it doesn't zigzag too much. And also, I feel not a small diameter, a nice biggish diameter like that big uh, net float there and you can either hold it as I did and well it went out miles you know as far as I was concerned certainly far enough to catch a fish pitch dark now fingers crossed we get a take uh, you probably won't see the bites on there but I have had some little tap bites on there just like this on my bean stick can you believe on the bean stick I think I'm going to wheel it and check it because I've got two hooks out there my goodness if I've got two at once that'd be something wouldn't it Definitely getting bites, so let's get it in. Oh, 
don't know which hand to use. I think the right hand. I want the next card as well. With nothing on there, I definitely have five. There's nothing on there. I want to be able to cast it out again. Trying to spread it up and down. This is what you call fishing back to basic, absolute Neanderthal fishing. <laughs> it's either we, bear hook, or dare it be a fish. Oh, I'm really disappointed. I know there are bites on there, but look, the hooks are absolutely shredded, stripped. Maybe, maybe I should keep an eye on that uh, bean stick a little bit more for bites. Maybe I should have bought it a bit earlier, but I've got to give it another go. Bait up and get it out. Here goes nothing, guys. Give it a second go. There it is, what we're looking for is this. A little bit of creaking and bumping. It's nice and tight. Three fresh worms on there. And I've dug this in just there. Buried it as well. Just in case something large like a cod comes along. But guys, it's been hammering. It's been absolutely hammering. Light it up there. Hopefully you'll be able to see the bite. There he goes, there he goes. That's a bite, that's a bite. Oh no, how long do I leave it? Do I whiz it in? What do you think? Just see if he takes again. It's definitely a bite. Come on, fish. Has he left it or is he still chewing his way up the worm? There he goes, there he goes. That's a bean stick as a bite indicator. I love it. Don't use black line if you do. Black line at night is not good. Go walk down. Maybe that'll strike the hook in. We'll find out. Now, the big retreat. There we go, guys. Not one. Not two. But two, three white, including a real clonker. Look at that. That's amazing. Isn't that a fishing back to basics? Really nice fish there, really pleased with it. Maybe that's the idea is the hand line is you need to hold it more and actually feel the bites and wheel them in. I'm very pleased with that last whiting. This is definitely the way to go with this casting dome or I'm gonna call it casting stick. No, 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 I know what it looks like, I know what it looks like, but it's a stick, stick, stick. Filthy minded people. There we go, shows you it works. I can't wait to get it out there again. What can I do if I get a bigger fish on it? Brilliant. I've simply got to have another throw. I've got to give it another go. I love it, it's going to change me forever. This is being stick. Well, there you can see, hand lining can catch fish, and it can be a bit of fun. I've since learned that you can get a plastic spool with a fist grip like this, and a comb like a fishing reel, swing it around and throw it out. They use them abroad quite a bit. Don't know if you get them in the UK though, but have a search around on the web, you might be able to find one. Do you know what? I had great fun doing it. Bit primitive, bit basic, but I enjoyed it, and it caught fish. Does it get any better than that? Yeah. I want more hand lines.